2021, despite the pandemic, despite what happened, was a crazy year. Between 2020 and 2021, there has been between 1.5 to 2.5 times the money from the previous year. It's funny because we all get excited by that, but when you look at it in terms of proportion against the globe, it's good, but it's not that good. I'm not sure everybody understands what VC is. So if you allow me, I'll take a step back and define words so that we all understand what we mean. Sure. Yeah. So I think there's, there's two elements to it. One is the angel investors and the other one are venture capital funds and private equity funds. It's just the same continuum. These are people who invest money on their own behalf or on behalf of somebody else. That's just really the same difference, the, the only difference. So angel investors are those who invest their own money into companies, whatever form of company. And originally it's funny because that term angel investor actually comes from Broadway in the US where groups, that's a culture, entertainment, media, people set up um, theater shows or cultural shows and they were looking for good angels to support them financially to set it up. So that word was diverted progressively into investments and then become angel investors or business angels. But originally it's a cultural media entertainment word. Venture capitalists essentially are people who professionally invest other people's money. They have to chip in obviously. And essentially the idea is to have a type of asset class we say that provides return. So to go to your question, there's been a huge trend over the last seven years, I would say, on the continent where um, people are starting to see attractive investment opportunities, excellent entrepreneurs, and areas of growth that they were not seen before. So when we look at venture capital, also I have to define it. It's a bit different from private equity. Venture capital tends to look at technology or tech-enabled companies, right? So that's venture capital. And then you have private equity that looks like the big numbers you mentioned. People can put $50 million or $5 billion into a company. These are private equity funds, which are really large organizations. Venture capital also funds can be also big, but in general, they go from 100 to 200, not $1 billion funds. So that's kind of the landscape. So now, in terms of evolution, I must say that 2021, despite the pandemic, despite what happened, was a... I keep saying the crazy, a crazy year. So essentially, we've seen uh, between 2021 and 2020, 2020, sorry, and 2021, 4.5 billion equivalent. Is it 4.3, 4.5, or 5 billion? The recent, uh, recent Partek in dollars invested on the continent, which is crazy. So that means that between 2020 and 2021, there has been between 1. 1.5 to 2.5 times the money from the previous year. So clearly there's interest. But uh, it, it's funny because we all get excited by that. But when you look at it in terms of proportion against the globe, and I'll give you the numbers later on, it's good, but it's not that good. So we'll talk about it a bit more. But for specifically for Kenya, what I would say, and that's my you know, as a Ghanaian who's been living in Kenya since 2017, I must say that I've seen a lot of changes and a lot of positive outlooks. And funny enough, when we talk about all these investments, I, I would say to some extent, I, I don't really see them. What I see is what is in the street for me. And when I see the amount of infrastructure, when I compare Ghana to, <laughs> to, to Kenya, I'm like, it's just another level, right? When you see what has been done in Nairobi and beyond, on terms of infrastructure development, usually, unfortunately, is not counted in those monies. VC is coming in. But I think it has a long time effect on enabling VC investors to come in to invest in the country. So sometimes people are, are not always, I mean, people are looking just at one part of the pie and then not looking at the rest. And then they don't see, they're not seeing that the pie is getting bigger. 
they're just focused on their own small part, which is VC. But actually, when you look at broadly at the economy, it's actually more interesting. Essentially, it's fintech payments yeah. for more than 50%. I think the exact number is 53 or something like that. Why? Because essentially, a lot of first fintech across the world, yeah. when you compare Africa to Southeast Asia or Latin America, where the venture capital ecosystem moved, fintech is usually considered as, let me call it the railway. Mombasa, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> right? The railway, yeah. SGR. where SDR, yeah. where basically once the payments, the financial technologies are kind of sorted, it create what in tech we call it a stack. Mm -hmm. And then, then everybody can plug on it, which is basically the rail. Once the rail is there, you can ship goods, et cetera, and people, et cetera. So that's what is happening now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of investors are pumping money into payments and fintech because they strongly believe that obviously they're going to have excessively good returns, right? But also they're building the infrastructure for everybody to plug in across various um, verticals, I would say. It's a tough question. It's been a debate for the last five, six years I know of, in Kenya specifically. So I've got some stats for you. Yeah, sure. So. In terms of composition of teams, startups, etc., in Nigeria, instead of investors, like investors looking at uh, entrepreneurs, usually in Nigeria is 50-50, meaning 50 local, 50 yeah. non-local, okay? In South Africa is 70 local, 30, right? In Kenya is 90-10 for foreigners. <laughs> so that's, I don't have a clear explanation. I have only assumptions, yeah. right? One is, and I'm going to be controversial on what I'm going to say specifically, in, in some countries, you know, uh, economies, and actually it's part of nationalism, and I, I'll, I'll mention that specifically, meaning everybody knows Nigerians are very proud. It's like they want to, it's like, yeah. Egyptians are actually the same, same type. They're very proud of the economy. They're very proud people. They want to develop their own systems. So I'm not saying Kenyans are not, but I think it also put in money, money where the mouth is, yeah. right? Yeah. I think there's that element. The other point is probably, and <laughs> I, I'm going to be very controversial on that is, I have a feeling that sometimes um, the there's an acceptance of it that's like, it's just like that, so it's not fault. Mm -hmm. That's my, sometimes my feeling. It's like, I, and I, there's been instances where I have managed, as, as you mentioned earlier, pools of capital. And I, as a director, I made it very clear. I will not have out of 10 investments, more than two, which are not local, very simply. And that was my policy because I could make this decision, right? So that, that's probably one aspect. To be honest with you, I really don't know. Maybe the other one is what I was talking about, the networks, mm -hmm. right? Where, you know, if you're, you know, educated here, et cetera, you have local networks, but obviously if you haven't traveled or developed those networks, you will not, yeah? yeah? So maybe what I can say is like, please, Kenyans, head to, head to Silicon Valley, stay there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or at least, you know, build your networks, land, make sure, yeah, and then bring in the capital. Okay. Yeah, that's, so, on that, I have to give a, a historical example too, actually, very quickly on that aspect of uh, local versus international, right? Historically, Israel, for instance, is where it is because, from a, uh, because of a government program called Yozma. The Yozma program, what it did is look, the government said, look, I'll put down $100 million and I invite mostly Silicon Valley funds to come and set up teams where there's a one from Silicon Valley, one from Israel. Put yourself there together and we pump in money. So for every fund, I think they will put in 10 million and then they raise the rest. And then those local people were paired and then they start investing, right? Mm -hmm. And then they build an ecosystem, et cetera, over time. 
And look, look guess what? 90 or 95 percent of Israeli startups, where do they go and IPO? US. They have an exit market. Most of the time, the Israel stock exchange doesn't have any major IPO. They do, yeah. but most of it is in US or UK. Yeah. Startup Chile, in Chile, South America. They had a huge government-led program that really fostered the ecosystem for a long time. Now, anybody in the world can go and incubate in Startup Chile and the investor reporting because they build a track record and the history there, okay? South Korea, Singapore, there are so many places. But I think the biggest two examples are Yosma program in Israel and Startup Chile. I'm not talking even about Scandinavia, Estonia, Estonia et cetera. It's yeah. another, another level. Yeah. The type of person, in, in terms of um, management and coaching and relationship, I, I'm a more of a sounding board. So depending on the level of coaching, mentorship, and ideas exchange of the entrepreneur, I can be more involved or less involved. And also when I see that an entrepreneur is struggling to get things done, I can get in, support the entrepreneurs, and then get things on, right? One of the entrepreneurs I, I have in the portfolio, basically they're looking for a part-time CFO. Mm -hmm. He asked me if I could. I said, my friend, do you don't see my 30 minutes every day? I don't have time. Let me help you find somebody. But if I had more time, clearly I would have done, you know, part-time remote CFO because this is a company I think can make it eventually. Mm -hmm. So I dedicate my time and basically, because basically I'm investing in my own money, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what can happen. So it depends on each person how we want to get involved. I know some people actually who put money down, but the condition to make put money down is I want to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting my money down, but I want to be chief strategy officer, CFO or CTO, whatever role you want. Mm -hmm. And it's an agreement, mm -hmm. right? As an angel, yeah. right? If you have the time, the energy, the knowledge, why not? <laughs>